Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day that we have come together to glorify Him, to honor Him, to praise Him. I welcome you in His holy name. Amen. Just a few announcements I want to make before we get into our worship time. The November and December upper room are here. They're at the Narthex. They're down here in the lobby of the educational building. They're also in the lobby of the fellowship hall. You can pick up a pocket size or you can pick up a large size. <coughs> Looks like this. And it'll take you through to the new year, 2022. This coming, this coming Wednesday, um, several things are going on here at the, the church. And of course, one of those things is a walk through the Bible story stations. It's during youth club from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, seven stations with a story overview and every child receiving a treat from that station. And it all has to deal with Bible stories. It's not the story of uh, this and that and other. But, uh, you know, it's uh, very biblical. Hope that you will get the word out. And maybe you got some little neighbors that they're not a member here, but they sure would enjoy coming in and being a part of that. You know, our middle school is just uh, doing all kinds of things, trying to work out stuff, you know, for their age group to be part of the ministry here, and they're doing a great job. Middle school youth and PYC both are sponsoring um, our donations for the shoebox. And uh, information about that shoebox ministry is right here. Uh, they're trying to get those items by the middle of November. They're looking at uh, making preparation to send those out to where need is in the world. And of course, here at Cherville Area Ministries, they also have a, uh, a joy of gift, a joy of giving. You can read about that. You can. Uh, you know, adopt a family during the time for children or family, you know, during the Christmas time. Uh, please read on that, and there is great need here in our community. Other things I want to point out uh, uh, here in your bulletin, please read over those. You'll notice that uh, this coming Wednesday also, the E-Team ministry has has uh, care. And this past week, uh, our R team, uh, they, they conducted 86 prayers, mailed out 14 cards for a total of 100 contacts. That was through our R team. This coming week is the E team. If you want to add someone to our care ministry emphasis, please do so. You'll find cards out here to uh, fill in here on the outside of the Entrance ways here in the North X, give us a call, drop it, leave it in the offering plate, whatever it might be, you know, just as long as we get the name and who they are, uh, and who you are, and uh, how we can get in touch with them. And we'd love to uh, offer that prayer to your loved ones and those whom you're concerned with, you know, through our care ministry. We'll try to do that. Just call us, email us. Uh, get in touch with us in any kind of way. And then, of course, here, let me remind you to be in prayer, daily prayer for members of our congregation. The names are listed here. We do want to lift up uh, Christian sympathy. Uh, just this week, Michael Philbeck uh, said goodbye to a brother, T.J. Long, uh, Elisa Crawley, and Summerlin Bra uh, Brayberry. Also, the death of uh, a grandmother or a lady who was like a grandmother to them, Margaret Robbs. And, uh, of course, we do want to add to our prayer concerns Cynthia Holmesley's nephew, David Martin, Jr. Uh, so add that name, uh, David Martin, Jr., to our uh, daily prayer. And please be in prayer for these members and friends of our church uh, as you lift your prayers up to the Lord on a daily fashion. Mr. Joe Ganey is going to be helping us now enter into a time of uh, 
consciously entering into a time of worshiping the Lord through the music that Joe's going to be playing. Joe, lead us in.
Almighty God, you have sent Jesus to show us how to live. Grant us the power of your Holy Spirit so that we may follow him in faithfulness all the days of our lives. Lord Jesus, in your holy and precious name, receive now this gift of worship that we bring and may you be glorified. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Elder Mike Atwell is going to come now in our stewardship emphasis time that we have uh, this month and the first part of next month. And Mike is going to speak to us concerning our giving this past year. Mike, welcome. Thank you, Bill. God bless you. Well, I am blessed to be here today. Amen. We didn't do this last year. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's good to be here. And, you know, I've been on the stewardship committee for 20 years, and um, you know, I really thought this uh, COVID event was really going to be a setback for us. But, you know, we've paid off the note, and, uh, you know, we have no debt. And the church is in as good a financial shape as it's ever been in. And so praise the Lord and thanks to you, uh, because without your, uh, your giving, it wouldn't be possible. So... Uh, and we've done great things. I mean, I look at that, uh, the facility that we have. It's your facility. Your members here. It doesn't belong to anybody else. This, this is our facility. And it's, it's just a beacon for God's presence in this community. It's just a building. But the building has uh, God's name on it. People yeah. know that uh, it's a symbol for him and this community, that they can come here. And uh, they can know that they can find Christian love and, and that's, that's really what it's all about. Um, you know, I have a scripture I was going to read uh, from Galatians chapter 6. Each one should test their own actions. Then they take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each should carry their own load. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please the fl their flesh, from their flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit... From the Spirit will reap eternal life. And this is the most important part. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And so I still look at the mission as sort of half done. We have a great facility, but now we've got to fill it up. We've got to grow the church. And so instead of a growth uh, growth fund, you know, it's it's grow it's it's really about growing the programs for the future so that we, we can be the place that people... I think there's great things coming ahead. I mean, there's, this area is changing. This area is growing. And, and I think this church can play a vital part in it. But we've got to reach out. <laughs> and we've got to, you know, we've got to provide um, God's message in the community and show God's love in the community. Uh, hiring somebody for next year is one of our top priorities. So... Um, you know, I feel good as stewardship chair that we can take on this responsibility, but it's, it means staying the course. If you've been giving to the growth fund, I would ask that you continue to give to this growing to the future. Um, and this is also a time for reflection on where are you in your giving? I mean, there's a little percentage chart on here, but I, and it shouldn't take a whole big chart. You, you know how much you give every month, you know how much you spend every month, and, and what percentage is that? And when you look at where your money is going, where are you sowing? And is the amount that you're putting into the church a fair representation of the value that the church has for you in your life and the importance that you place on having a growing, vital church in this community, especially the one that you're a member of? And so, you know, take a look at where you are. When I first started um, with the stewardship committee, you know, stewardship was one of the things I was struggling with. I had young kids, and, <clears throat> and when I looked at it, I, you know, I wasn't giving that much. Nowhere near tithing. It's different than Susie's experience. I'd, you know, I thought if I put 20 bucks in the plate, that was a whole lot. And it took a while for me to just examine where I was going. And I had to give this talk, and a lot of times, the person I was talking to was <laughs> the one at the pulpit. I was talking to myself about stepping up and growing in you know, your ability to give to the church 
and I think you find is that uh, it's not just the money, but it's also your whole involvement in the church, the way you feel about the church just changes when you make it a higher priority in your life. And so, you know, you fill out the pledge cards. Honestly, you know, the pledge card is more for you than it is for us. <laughs> We've already got our budget. Uh, this, is, this is for you to examine what it means to you and make sure that your giving is appropriate to the value that you really place on your relationship uh, to God and your commitment to serve through this church. So I just ask you to pray about that and uh, God will give you uh, the blessings and rewards for your commitment to him. And so uh, thank you because we've done great things and I think we'll continue to do great things in this community. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you as you bless us. Let's take a moment now to prepare our hearts as we come before the Lord this morning consciously. Intentionally. Deliberately. We who are gathered, Lord, in worship this day, those present here, those who are listening through this live stream, those who will be joining us later on this afternoon, and those who will be receiving tapes that throughout the week as they join in and as they as they come to this time of worship. We would invite all to bow now as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ to allow those things that are within our heart as we journey along in this spiritual 
faith of Jesus Christ as we journey along to those places that we become very keenly aware of. People, events, plans, memorials, healings, all of those things that we are very conscious of in our prayers in our prayer life. Lord, we believe within us that we should speak to you about. But not only are these things that we are speaking to you about, but we're also listening, Lord, listening as to how we might be involved and participate in the prayer that we speak to you even now, even later. And we think about the gift of prayer. We think about what a glorious blessing it is that we individually, that we as a covenant family of faith can come to you and let our petitions be known, our supplications be asked, our confessions that will be heard above all the praise and the glory that is within us to be expressed before you, our God. And so we pray. And we praise you for the opportunity and the blessing that is ours in Jesus Christ to do so. Hear our prayers as your people now bow in silence and as we pray. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus, we ask it. In Jesus' name. For all of these matters now that are gathered up, we bring them into your holy presence. And through the Holy Spirit, your word tells us that they become like a pleasing aroma, a gift from your people. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Through the prophet Malachi, we hear these words. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, says the Lord of hosts, and put me to the test. See if I'll not open up the very floodgates of heaven and pour down for you an overwhelming blessing. Let us pray. Lord, you've given us so much. We are a people in the land of milk and honey, blessed not only physically, but spiritually. Through Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord, the gifts that we have, that you have entrusted us with, we prayerfully seek to be the stewards that you call us to be, and that our gifts might be shared with those, Lord, who have need. And it is in Christ Jesus' name we pray as we make these our offerings. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Yep, we're just about a little over halfway in our stewardship emphasis season for 2022. Uh, this morning, I'm looking at a couple of texts, one from a gospel, one from an epistle. Uh, in the gospel according to Matthew, over in the 25th chapter, 
Uh, this is the basis, along with Ephesians chapter 4, the basis of our teaching this morning on, uh, on giving. A gift opens doors, as Proverbs 18, 16 says. Matthew chapter 25, you can open a pew Bible, you can open your Bible, or you can just listen to God's Word being read. For I do believe that God always blesses the reading and the hearing of His Holy Word. First, a reading from Matthew chapter 25, beginning with the 14th verse. Listen to the Word of God. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. And the one who had received the five talents went off at once and, and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents, but the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with him. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for the worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The second reading, Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with the 11th verse. The gifts he gave were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full statute of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, 
we must grow up in every way into him who is the head and to Christ and from whom the whole body joined and knitted together in every ligament with which it is equipped as each part of the body working properly promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh. I'm a country boy. Thank you. So I can talk about country boys. There were two old country boys walking down a dirt road one afternoon. One of them says, Hey, Sam, you and I are good buddies, aren't we? Sam says, You know, Elroy, you know we're good buddies. He said, Sam, you know, if we're such good buddies, why, I bet if you had a million dollars, you'd give me half of it, wouldn't you? Elroy said, Sam said, well, Elroy, you know, if I had a million dollars, you know I'd give you half of it. And they walked on down the road a little bit further. Elroy said, Sam, we're good buddies, aren't we? Yeah, Elroy, you know we're good buddies. We are good, good buddies. We're Buddy Rose, in fact. He said, yeah. He said, we're such good friends. He said, I bet if you had $20,000, you'd give me half of it, would you? He said, you better believe I would, Elroy. You better believe I would. I'd give you half of that. They walked on a little bit further. He said, Sam, he said, if you had two hogs, he said, I bet you, we're such good friends, I bet you'd give me half of your two hogs, wouldn't you? He said, Errol, what you talking about? You know I got two hogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, that is not what Jesus nor Paul is talking about in this scripture. That is not at all what they are giving to us in today's text. Jesus says that God has invested in each and every one of us. All of us have been blessed. Now, one translation one translation of the Bible says that we have been blessed with bags of silver. And the Living Bible says that we have been given bags of gold. For sure, the word literally translated as talent, as we have read here, uh, means a measured amount of money. But it is universally agreed by Bible scholars that the bags of silver or gold represent anything, anything that we have been blessed with, whether it was money, possessions, gifts, abilities, talents. The point is that the entire parable told by Jesus and later on emphasized by Paul being not what we have been blessed with, but how we have used what we have been blessed with. Jesus makes it clear that God is looking for a return on his investment. He's encouraging us to take our place, to use what we have been blessed with, the talents, the abilities, the gifts, whatever they are imagined in, whatever God has given us, that God is looking for us to use that for his glory. Paul makes that basic concept and expands on it 
Christ has given what he calls spiritual gifts to his people. Here in Ephesians, he lists the so-called speaking gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. But in his letters to both the Romans and the Corinthians, Paul lists a whole lot of other things. Listen, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is encouragement, encouraging others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. In Corinthians, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern, discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from some other spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in all unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts and he alone decides which gift each person should have. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles and those who have the gift of healing and those who can help others, and those who have the gift of leadership, and those who speak in unknown languages. I can save you the trouble of counting them. There are 21 listed in the New Testament. Paul's point being, because all Christians have the Spirit all Christians have a gift of the Spirit to be used to build the, the kingdom of God. God's kingdom at this time and in this place. So Paul echoes Jesus. We have been blessed in order to be a blessing. How are those evangelists, pastors, and teachers going to be a blessing? Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work, to build up his church, the body of Christ. And how are the people of the church going to be a blessing? As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So Jesus, what's the goal? To use what we have been given to make heavenly music here on earth to give God a good return on his investment. And Paul, do you have anything more to add? As more and more people begin to reinvest what God has invested in them, the body of Christ, the church is built up. It grows stronger, more healthy, full of love, and therefore better able to accomplish 
its message. Now, having said all of this about what we have been given on behalf of Christ's church, I also want to mention there's a warning. There's a warning. There is the tendency, if we're not careful, to substitute accomplishing the Lord's work for spiritual growth. To be sure, using our gifts to build up the body of Christ is part and parcel of our walk with God. But to allow business, even business for the Lord, to interfere with our higher calling to draw near to God through Scripture, prayer, and worship doesn't do us or God any good whatsoever. Remember, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Any work we accomplish on behalf of our Lord honors him and accomplishes his will and is empowered by his spirit only. When that work is a natural outgrowth of drawing near to and therefore becoming more like Jesus. To bear the fruit of the Spirit, therefore, is more important than displaying the gifts of the Spirit. Don't get me wrong now. The gifts of the Spirit are to be desired. They're, they're to be sought. They're to be used for the glory of God. However, the New Testament teaches that they are to take a back seat to bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Paul is very clear about this in his letter to the Corinthians where he is talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, he says, now I will show you a more excellent way. And in chapter 13, he says, I can display all the gifts of the Spirit in the world. But if I don't bear the fruit of the Spirit, in this case, love, the gifts count for nothing. In other words, the fruit of the Spirit should be cultivated first, and then our character will drive the gifts of the Spirit. The most important fruit of the Spirit in this regard is faithfulness. Let's allow faithfulness to be that which propels us on for using whatever God has given us to glorify God and to build up the church. For in his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul asks, what is required of stewards? A steward, of course, is being a messenger of what one has been given. And his answer, his answer is this. They are found faithful. Faithful. Because of the combined faithfulness of people here at First Presbyterian Church, there has been a presence that we find ourselves continually being regarded as fulfilling our mission of sharing God's grace with our community. And this is the way it's supposed to work. Many here have been and are now faithful in offering their gifts, their skills, their time to accomplish a mission on behalf of God's kingdom. A mission on God's kingdom. The fruit of the Spirit, which is faithfulness, motivated all of us to offer the gifts of the Spirit. I want to say that beyond offering specific gifts, everyone here can plug into the go part of our church motto. You know, our church motto is right there on your bulletin. Gather, 
grow, go to the glory of God. I want to emphasize that go part. As each part does its own special work. Now to say I am my own, what I do with my life is my business, Jesus. And therefore I really don't wish to play in your orchestra. I don't wish to be a part of your family of faith certainly invites disaster. For Jesus replied, even what little they had will be taken away. Jesus seems to be saying, use it or lose it. Lose what? Lose out on the joy of investing and reinvesting in his kingdom. Notice that Jesus says to both the men who invested what they were blessed with, well, well done, my good and faithful servants. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. Come, let us celebrate together. You know, there's joy to be experienced as we invest in what God has given us to give back into the kingdom, is it not? Consecration Sunday, next November, will celebrate your proposed giving in 2022. But it'll also be the time and the date, and this will be the place where we burn the mortgage note. Now, I want to allude just a little bit and say amen to what Mike Atwell said a while ago. If this were not God's house, this would just be another building. I thought about it, another song, after I'd already given Julie all of my information that I needed to give her for this bulletin, and she had already printed it. But I thought of another song. And in that song, it goes like this. We sang it at Companions in Christ this past week. Here I raise my Ebenezer. You ever wonder what an Ebenezer is? Well, the scripture tells us what an Ebenezer is. When the children of Israel, well, I should say the Hebrews, when the Hebrews led by Moses, God's man, and by God's Spirit parted the Red Sea and they walked across on dry ground. The Word says that each tribe was to take out a huge boulder and they were to place it uncarved, unchiseled, nothing written on it, no etchings, nothing to make it look beautiful at all. Take it on to the other side of the Red Sea and they were to stack those up there. Just a pile of rocks, you might say. Well, God said, when the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan, led by Joshua, through the Spirit of God leading him, that the children of Israel, each tribe was to take out a large boulder and place it into the promised land. And there again, if that were it, it would just be another pile of 12 rocks. But an Ebenezer is more than that. An Ebenezer is your children and your children's children. And those who shall come after them one day will ask this question. What do these stones memorialize? Why are they here? Why is it at this place that they are put? You are to tell them how God has led you from slavery and has allowed you by his promise to enter into his promised land and has blessed you. Here I raise my Ebenezer. You know, in every community, let's just, let's just keep it here in the city limits of Cherubal. You can ride around 
and you'll see Ebenezer's all over this place. Some call them churches. But like Mike said, Mike, I'm going to use you, not, not verbatim, but I'm going to allude to it, that when people ride by here, they know this is a house of worship. This is a place where God is served. This is a place where you can discover forgiveness, where you can allow yourself to be used by the Lord to offer others kindness. It is a place where the joy of the Lord fills those and his peace is upon all of those. It is offered to you and his Holy Spirit will dwell within you. It is in this place, these Ebenezer's all about our community. That's why these stones are stacked upon one another. That's why these bricks are laid one upon one another. That's why this lumber is used to build and erect a facility. All of these symbolize Ebenezer's, what God has done, but what God is doing and what God will do. Here we raise our Ebenezer, and on Consecration Sunday, we will celebrate just one more keystone of that cornerstone that was laid by him who is all faithful. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. Would you please join me in singing our last hymn this morning? It's hymn number 411. It's time to do it. <laughs> the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you, my brothers and sisters, now and always.
Thank you. Thank you. Did it 